and welcome to Voice of a Creative. This is my new YouTube channel where I will be talking about sewing and my other sewing makes. So I've decided to start this channel and there are a couple of reasons why. Firstly to record the different things that I'm making and my journey through that and me trying out new things. Secondly because actually the sewing community is a fantastic community and I want to be more involved in that and I spend a lot of time watching other YouTube videos of different people who sew and I'm really enjoying that and they are so inspiring and motivating and, if, and are really encouraging me to sew more and so actually I want to be part of that as well and the last thing is I want to show everybody the things that I've made but also for me sewing is a huge stress relief and my day-to-day -day life is um, quite stressful in work and actually if I know that I'm filming a video to put up online that'll help me kind of keep to it and help me keep motivated when sewing instead of just kind of being lazy and just sitting around all the time. I've decided to do the seamstress tag um, I know it's about a year too late but because it's the new channel I've decided to just go ahead and do that for the first video and this was something that was started by Holly Dolly and I'll tag her below and it's just a way of different people who um, sew, getting to know each other and things like that as well. So the first question is, who are you? So I'm Keely, I'm 28 and I live in Bristol with my husband Ben and my cat Bramble. And I'm an art teacher and I absolutely love my job, but it can be quite stressful and take up a lot of time. And so that's where sewing comes in. So when and why did I start sewing? So I started sewing when I was a lot younger, I was a very creative child um, and made lots of different things. But actually I started to get into it more when I did GCSE textiles and that was when I made my first dress. Uh, I chose to make it out of this horrible slippy sidey fabric which was a terrible choice for a first dress. Uh, but I also learned how to put in an invisible zip which was great. And then when I was 17 I decided to buy my own sewing machine and that was because I just wanted to do more different things with sewing and make cushions first of all and then kind of get into dressmaking. So the first dress I made was a pinafore type dress and I wore it all the time and I really loved it and it kind of carried on from there. Through university I did an art and drama degree so actually I decided I wanted to photograph myself in different outfits for my art and some of those outfits were going to be historical outfits and actually hiring things um, would get really expensive so I decided to buy the fabric and make it and I actually really loved that that would become part of the artwork as well so I started to do that and from there I was like well if I've made all these outfits why can't I make things that I wear every day so I made skirts and dresses and then got into sewing jersey about uh, six or seven years ago and have carried on from there really and to now when I'm trying to, to think of more challenging things to make and actually really build my skills. So the next question is what is your favourite or proudest make? So I think one of my proudest makes is when I got to make a wedding dress for my now husband's mum and it was this one which is the McCall's Bridal Elegance M5321 and I will post a picture of the actual dress I made now and I made that one and it was in um, a red kind of silk fabric I can't remember the exact fabric and she really loved it and it was exactly what she wanted and I had to get my nan to help me make it because actually I hadn't followed many patterns by that point uh, this is about six seven years ago maybe yeah and I was really proud because um, my husband's mum was so happy with it and that's really lovely I love sewing for other people when it means that they have so much joy from the things I make as well. So two more proudest makes because I couldn't just pick one. The next was this pattern here. So that is the Simplicity 1606 and that was the pattern that I used for my bridesmaid dresses. So for my bridesmaid dresses I had three people as my bridesmaids and they were all different shapes and sizes and it was a miracle that I managed to fit them all in this same dress pattern but it was amazing and it looked great and I'm really happy that I did that. More recently I've made the Sew Over It Vintage shirt dress and that was because I wanted to challenge myself with buttonholes and um, a collar and a shirt generally 
and it turned out really well and I'm really pleased with it and I'm definitely going to be making more of those and I was just really happy that I was able to do buttonholes as that was a new skill that I hadn't done before. So my most disastrous make, there's actually been a few and some of those have been down to just bad fabric choice so I made this beautiful kind of ball gown dress which was this cranberry lace that I'd bought from Fabricland and I'd made it all and it looked really good and it fitted really well and then I decided to iron it and yes the lace burnt and so I had to kind of like cover it with stitching um, but that was horrible after I spent so long doing that dress. The next thing was this jacket here so this was a pattern that I got uh, when I sent away to the Daily Mail and it's a jacket pattern and I tried to make it and it just turned out all twisted and things didn't match up and I didn't quite get it and it just well that's disappeared I don't even know where that jacket is now it's it's gone um, and more recently a make that I have got that just turned out really wrong and I'm not sure why is the Q dress by Nina Lee now I made the strapped version and that came out wonderfully but then I decided to make the sleeved version and for some reason, I think I'd cut it wrong, which was the problem. It was really gapy at the chest here. And I was like, oh, I'll just chop it off and make it into the strapped version. And that did not work. And so I've got like this gathered kind of bust, um, which looks really odd. But I can actually save that one because I can unpick the waist and actually add a waistband and turn it into a skirt. So I will be um, adding that and doing that as well. So my favourite place to go shopping so in Bristol, there aren't many places to go fabric shopping. So you've got Fabricland and then there's a few local fabric shops, which I do go to, but they're more to pick up um, diff just different kinds of fabrics if or if I just randomly want to go fabric shopping. Previously, I did get a lot of my fabrics on eBay. So there was a certain seller that I went to who's not around anymore. And actually, I bought all of my jersey from uh, her online. Since she's kind of gone now, I've been buying from the online shops and I'm really happy that so many, there are so many online fabric shops because actually they sell the most beautiful fabrics and really high quality and actually you get to see sometimes videos of them and it's a really lovely way to buy fabric. But I do actually still like to go to fabric shops. I was really lucky because when I went to New York, I got to visit Mood. Now I've seen Mood in Project Runway loads of times. So this is a place that I really wanted to go. And it was really good. And there was so much fabric and I wanted to buy a lot more, but obviously I had to take it home from New York. So I did only buy a few things and I've barely used any of the fabric because I don't want to ruin it. Um, but I'm hope I've got some projects planned that hopefully will use some of these fabrics. So my most used pattern, now I've got quite a few of these because I am a repeat sewer, like I find one pattern that's amazing and I sew it and sew it and sew it and sew it. So there's a few of these and I'm just going to show you um, the few that I like at the moment. So the first one is this one, which is the McCaws 7122 and I got this through the magazine and it's basically a jersey raglan sleeve top pattern and I have adapted it a few different ways so chain you make usually making view a but actually adjusting the bottom and um, changing the sleeve length and things like that as well and I'll post a few pictures on the screen so you can see the kind of thing that I've made with this the next one is this McCall's pattern as well so that is the M7381 and it's actually not a pattern for jersey uh, but I have made it in Jersey and actually somehow got it to work and so this is one I've made quite a few times so it kind of wraps over at the front and then has a ga gathered front it is supposed to be gathered at the back as well but actually in Jersey it became a bit too heavy so it didn't really um, work very well but I have about maybe eight of these in different jerseys um, yeah really good pattern and really nice shape I find for me as well I'll post some pictures of that as well and I will link everything down below as well that I've talked about in the video. And the last one is this one. Now I've got this pattern. This is the Blackwood Cardigan from Helen's Closet. And I got this pattern at the beginning of May. And I've already made three versions. One of which I am wearing now. So this is the short version that I've made. 
and it's an amazing pattern and I absolutely love it and I plan to make a lot lot more of them because I love cardigans and I think the combination of dress card uh, dressing cardigan is amazing and so I will be making a lot more of those as well so my most dreaded sewing task so is basically I love everything about sewing apart from when it goes wrong so I absolutely hate unpicking things I just oh I can't I will actually I will actually put something to the side and not unpick it because it's so, such a traumatic task and especially because I sew a lot with jersey actually unpicking jersey you have to do each stitch at a time and you put if, if you pull it apart you could stretch the fabric and so I really try to avoid that at all costs and the other task is kind of alterations but not like simple alterations that's absolutely fine but it's when you've got something and it just doesn't fit you and you're like oh I, I usually would rather kind of give up on that item and just move on to the next one which is something that I'm trying to kind of change because actually it's a waste of the fabric and the money and actually I've already put a lot of effort into that so I'd like to kind of continue it to actually make it a wearable garment garment and actually a lot of that I'm kind of doing I can sometimes alter it so it kind of fits my sister or my other sister and actually that's really good because it means I can pass them off to other people and they can really enjoy them as well and my favorite sewing task so surprisingly after watching a lot of these seamstress tag videos is a lot of people hate cutting out the pattern and cutting out the fabric and I absolutely love that part because it's the bit where you decide which view you're gonna make and whether you're going to hack it to an, with another pattern or whether you're just going to make it straight off and it's just like the start of the journey and the other one which a lot of people also have have mentioned as their favorite thing is when you manage to get the final seams in and you can actually try it on because that's amazing you're like oh look at what I've made and if it's turned out really well that's really exciting as well so my favorite sewing entertainment so Quite often I'll just have Netflix um, on in the background and I'll watch TV shows that just have lots and lots of episodes so it can, it can keep playing. But more recently I've been listening to the Citrus Brew podcast um, and the Love to Sew podcast which is lovely to have people kind of in the room with you. It's like you're sewing with friends and sometimes YouTube videos as well. But not so much the YouTube videos because I actually want to watch those a lot of the time so I can actually see the, the things people are showing. But yeah, mostly Netflix and then I've got into podcasts, so the podcasts. Okay, printed or PDF? Now, I'm very torn about this question because actually my first PDF pattern I only downloaded a month ago. So I've been having printed patterns a lot longer. Um, and I, 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 can't really, I can't really make a decision. I do like that PDF patterns. You can print them off, you can print them off again, and you can cut them out in different sizes, which is really great for me because I do make garments in lots of different sizes for different people. So that is really good. And also you can get it instantly, so if you want um, a pattern from somebody who's in America or Canada, you can download it straight away and actually get started on it, which is what I did with uh, this one, the Blackwood cardigan. <laughs> I downloaded it and had it made, I think, the next day or something. Um, so I really enjoyed that about it. However, the printed patterns are something that I like, like the envelopes, they're really beautiful and things like that. So kind of don't really have a choice I'm sure as I kind of move forward over the next year I will there will be a clear choice um, but as yet I haven't made a decision on that so what machine do I use so I had uh, my first machine when I was 17 and then this machine was an upgrade from that but actually not much of an upgrade so it's got a uh, side loading bobbin and it's just got dials to change the stitches it does have a lot of different stitches but actually it's not one of those um, digital machines because I'm actually quite scared of those. Although I feel like I should upgrade at this point and I should also get an overlocker, but actually those things really scare me. And uh, I think that's something that I might need to be convinced a bit more of um, as well. So my machine is a Toyota Quiltmaster. Um, and do I have any other hobbies? Yes, I have a lot, a lot of hobbies. So. I'm an art teacher but actually in my spare time I do uh, realistic drawing and painting and at university I did printmaking so I actually do that at home as well. So that's a lot of art things. I also kind of make birthday cards and things for my family and friends 
and I like to make gifts and things for my family and friends as well. I am also part of a sketchbook circle with that so that is uh, where you meet up, you kind of have a sketchbook with another art teacher and you share ideas and you work on top of each other's work and that's been really lovely because again it's helping me feel more part of a community outside of work. I also really enjoy gardening so my nan and my mum are teaching me gardening and about plants and things and actually I see that's another creative outlet and um, to make my car my garden look really beautiful and then I can take photographs of the flowers which I can then draw so it all uh, works together but I also read a lot and enjoy going shopping especially fabric shopping or looking online for fabric um, or just going for inspiration and things like that and then obviously taking photos of my cat is quite a, a, a big hobby um, as he always pulls so many interesting poses that I really want to photograph as well. So I think that is the end of the question so I'm just gonna tell you what I'm wearing today. So I've got my black hood cardigan um, in this really soft um, kind of knitted fabric um, which I got from Fabricland I think. Um, so I got that and I've got on my seamstress pin which is from Pink Coat Club, I will link her below, really lovely and in this turquoise colour which isn't available anymore but they do have some other really beautiful colours. And then my dress is a jersey dress and it's this pattern here which is the new look K6262 and it's uh, view, view D, the um, strapless one with the two sets of darts which darts in jersey is quite tricky but actually I really like it um, to get a fitted dress and I just put my own skirt on the bottom of that. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, please subscribe and like the video um, if you want to see more from me. Thank you, bye!